It's almost impressive how quickly Disney managed to crap all over its legacy by making a series of terrible decisions both on the big screen and at their parks. And maybe now you're saying the ship is course correcting. Well, based on all the sequels and remakes coming out by Bob Iger, along with basically using nothing more than IPs at the Disney parks, no, I would say it's business as usual over there. And business is sucking for everyone. Disney's always been a family affair. You can say these movies are made for children, you'd be wrong. While yes, they are the primary demographic, parents need to see them too, because guess what? They have the money. So your kid's not going to Disney, your kid's not watching that new live action Mufasa movie without the parents' investment. And so it's in Disney's best interest that they make products that are enjoyable for both kids and adults alike. Nostalgia was a huge untapped market a decade or so back that absolutely needed to be utilized. And they were going to take this all the way down to the final stone and try to pull a little blood out of that as well. And that's why we've seen countless live action, sometimes like this because they're just CG live action, remakes of movies like Lion King, The Jungle Book, Cinderella, Aladdin, Little Mermaid, Bambi's coming out, Lady and the Tramp came out, but nobody remembers because it was shout out in Disney Plus. Pinocchio shout out in Disney Plus. There are so many of them that you have and have not heard of. And this is something that made them tons of money. And I believe the one that really started it, the catalyst of all of this, was Star Wars The Force Awakens. A movie that did hit everyone in the feels. People were super excited to see it. They got the young audience. They got the older audience. They brought back the classic characters and then ruined them. And yes, nostalgia was the big key component to that. We got Harrison Ford in this. We got Carrie Fisher in this. We have freaking Mark Hamill. In well, he wasn't in it. He was teased to be in it in the future where they would ruin his character as well. Like they ruin almost every legacy character. Thanks, Disney. You're doing great. It was no longer how do we marry art and capitalism in beautiful synchronized harmony. Now it was how do we utilize old art and capitalism and then smash it together and charge more for it. I'm a big fan of Disney. I think most of the middle-aged guys that cry on YouTube every week about them, they were at one point as well but now it's lucrative to hate the company. And you need to step back and ask yourself, why is it lucrative? Well, because nostalgia is a hell of a drug. Most people, when they hit their late 30s, into their 40s and older, they look back fondly on their youth. Not all, there, there's plenty of people that had horrible childhoods and I feel bad for you, but I had, a, I had a pretty good one. But they look back on Disney specifically as that magical kingdom, the place you go to escape the real world, whether it was a good world or a bad one, you were safe there unless you were being human trafficked out of there. But most people were safe there. You were with Mickey. Oh, hi kids, uh -huh. it's Mickey Mouse. I don't know why I, I like pulled off his ear to say hi. <laughs> Make sure to head on over to Space Mountain. Uh -huh. Now you go to Disney and it's like, oh, hi kids, uh -huh. get in line you piece of shit. If you want to talk to me, you got to pay money. This house of miles ain't free, motherfucker. Oh, Toodles. Toodles is the bouncer at Disney. He's throwing your cheap ass out. Uh -huh. Toodles comes over, kush, kush, kush. Yes, Mouse King. I think I'm gonna do a separate video on how Universal is kicking the shit out of Disney when it comes to theme parks. They have Epic Universe coming out in 2025. If you don't know what Epic Universe is by Universal, it's pretty awesome. It's pretty damn cool. They got a monster section. They have the Mario stuff. They got a new Harry Potter world going on. A lot of things taking place. How to Train Your Dragon. Universal's always been a celebration of films. It's, it's ride the movies. That was always their thing. But with Disney, the IPs were just a bonus to what they were trying to do with their theme parks. Over at Epcot, it was about championing future ideas, growing new leadership, looking at the amazing achievements mankind has made in the past. Now, well, there's a Ratatouille ride there. There's the Frozen ride. We got a Guardians of the Galaxy ride. It's all IP based because they don't give a shit anymore. It's all about how do we get popular attractions there that people will pay money to see. That's fine, that's fine. But maybe don't put it in a theme park that wasn't really built around that. Make a new theme park. Or maybe 
look over at some of the shit you have already like Magic Kingdom and realize, wow, a lot of the rides here are super aged dumpster fires and we should probably update them. But they don't really need to. Instead, they do these really slow, tedious rollouts like Splash Mountain becoming Tiana's whatever adventure that took like 10 years to build to get everything figured out. Meanwhile, Universal Studios built two full theme parks in that time. And obviously voting with your wallet doesn't really work. Their theme parks still do very well. Although I do believe attendance has been down a little bit compared to past years. They're still making tons of money there off their trash old ass rides and their overcharged pricing of everything and the terrible removal of Genie Pass with an even worse option. Well, or at least equally as bad as that dumpster fire. Genie Pass is terrible. And on the movie and television side of things, it seems like there's a lesson being learned, but also one that's completely wrong at the same time. <laughs> Look at Inside Out 2. The movie's made over a billion dollars. It's a sequel to a beloved film. They got Frozen 3 on the way. They have Moana 2, and they have a live action Moana. They have a live action Lilo and Stitch. Everything's a sequel or a live action remake. And this is telling other studios it's working still. And that's why we have Jurassic World 4 coming out with Scarlett Johansson. Even though most of those movies are trash, they're still gonna keep putting them out because they don't care about making quality content. They're just gonna make expensive, loud, budget movies. They are pretty confident they can get people to go out to see. DreamWorks has a live action How to Train Your Dragon movie coming out. That's really sad to me because How to Train Your Dragon is an amazing trilogy of films. It's an animated classic. The live action movie is going to bring nothing to the table. It's just a simple, easy way to make money. They don't have to take a chance on new IP. They don't have to risk a bunch of money going into something that could fall on its face. They are very confident that if you put something that's already tried and true and you just have a different coat of paint on it, you're going to get that audience into the theaters. I remember saying how Disney was making a Mufasa prequel and people in the comments were like, what? Nobody liked that first movie. It sucked. Why are they making another one? Are they dumb? No, they're actually not dumb. People are dumb. <laughs> the first live action Lion King made over a billion dollars. It's one of the higher grossing movies. It's in the top, I think 15 or 20 highest grossing movies of all time. Not the animated one, the shitty new one. And so yes, they're going to make a prequel with Mufasa. I'm surprised they haven't shed out like three of them by now. There was supposed to be a sequel to the live action Beauty and the Beast as well from a few years ago. Probably still in the works somehow. I don't, I don't know what they're doing with that. Maybe we get a buddy road trip movie with Cogsworth and Lumiere. How, how depressing. I think the only real lesson learned from Disney so far is on the Marvel side of things. They're figuring out that, oh, maybe the MCU shouldn't be so oversaturated with bullshit. Maybe we don't need three new TV shows every year because it's hard for people to keep track of it all and the quality is severely lacking. Maybe we take our time and develop quality content again. And maybe we focus on characters that are actually cool that people care about and not a TV show about Agatha. Are you out of your mind? Who wanted that? And I love that actress, but who the hell wanted an Agatha show? The idea of targeting all these different types of people to pull into the MCU is just not a smart one. Because you've set the MCU up in such a way that you have a bunch of fans that you're now alienating by making all these different projects that seem to be targeting them as the enemy. So many movies and shows now are replacing the legacy hero with a daughter or son. It's always a daughter with Disney. And it's just kind of insulting. It's like, I don't even care if it's a strong female lead. I love a good strong female lead, but let's make it make sense in the story and not at the detriment of the hero that came before. There's all these different pieces at play at Disney. And I really think the laziness is starting to get to people in mass, not just the small sectors of YouTube. I'm talking overall kids and parents alike are starting to roll their eyes and get annoyed by these ridiculous long lines and prices at the theme parks and these shit out TV shows and films that no one seems to have any care in. Inside Out 2, fantastic movie. You can tell there was time and energy put into this one. You can tell that there was passion on display. It is Pixar under Disney, so of course you do have that separation. But outside of that, what did we have? Wish? Wish was absolute trash. 
it looked terrible too, which is rare for Disney to make something look so fugly. But I hated the style of that movie, and the story was miserably weak. We'll see how these other sequels do. Toy Story 5 is in the mix, of course. Toy Story 5, I'm surprised Cars 4 hasn't been greenlit yet. But an Iger some people trust. I'm not so sure I agree. He's been in charge again. He says he wants to make a focus on cleaning up the parks, really turning things around. I have not seen it. In fact, I've seen the opposite. Doubling down on IP. There's a new Cars Land supposedly in the works for the Magic Kingdom area somewhere. There is a Toy Story ride that's also going to be over there. Is this really what people want? At the end of the day, I just want to be able to take my family to movies again and have a good time. And witness something that's truly for their generation that I can be a part of. Because right now, watching all these freaking remakes from 5-year-old movies or 10-year-old movies, it's not good. Even if the movies end up being great, I still would like something new. And that live action garbage is exactly that. It's cash grabby garbage. There's no soul behind any of it. They look for some reason really muddy visually. They don't have inspired storylines. Oftentimes they're ripped straight out of the freaking panels from the original animated ones. The storyboards are like one for one reshot. The music's oftentimes the same. What are we doing? Besides just simply printing money, the easiest and fastest way possible. What I'd love for Disney that they'll probably never do is get back to actual 2D animation again. We've seen a resurgence of this from Sony. They've been putting out some of that stuff. There was the Into the Spider-Verse movies, which looked phenomenal. We also had that Ninja Turtles movie last year, which I thought was great, looked awesome. I want Disney to invest in themselves again in the right ways. Maybe not the most financially viable right out of the gates, but one that will absolutely give them some respect again. Clearly, it can work when we've seen how much success Sony and other animated studios have had. Studio Ghibli, for instance, they're managing to do okay. Speaking of nostalgia, I remember when I was a kid going to the Disney lot, I think it was Hollywood Studios, you could do a tour and you would actually walk in the back rooms and you would see animators drawing cells for a new frame of a movie coming up. It was, it blew my mind. I wanted to do the job. I wanted to be an animator. I actually have a very good free hand, believe it or not, but I was, I was really into, I thought it was so cool. I think they were working on Emperor's New Groove at the time. They couldn't tell us it was a secret movie they were working on, but they let us see like a frame from the film. And I, I just, I was so in awe with the expertise and the craft and the, the passion on display. That stuff's completely gone now from the parks. It's nothing but corporate crap. But there is a way to blend the two. And I think, again, I look at Universal Studios, the new Epic Universe, and what they've done with their parks. That's the way to do things right. Don't insult your fan base. Treat your parks and your properties with respect because when you are dead and gone, your giant mounds of money mean fuck all to anyone else. But if you can make something that truly is magical again, both on screen and off, you have a legacy that you and maybe even your former boss, Walt, can be proud of. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like this conversation, I do tons of movie reviews, movie rants, roasts, live streams every single week. It's always focused on movies with an occasional slip into TV shows, or in this case, a bit of Universal Disney Parks. But it's always passionate, honest, and hopefully a bit of fun. If you love what I'm doing, you can leave a super thanks right under this video or become a Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. There are over 300 exclusive videos on Patreon, including vlogs every single month. And I have a brand new second channel, Adam Does Rants, where I'm doing more of this type of stuff, non-movie related. Would love to have you there as well. Take care.